Welcome back to 237. Back with another review. And it's been some time, but I am back with another Italian Giallo review. I believe the last one I did was a muck. And that was probably two or three months ago. Now, I know I went a little bit heavy last year, going from summer, early summer, all the way up through past Christmas and into January, even into two or three months ago with uh, <laughs> Italian horror films and Giallo. I just I, I got sucked into it so, so much. I, I love Gialli. I love Italian horror. But I figured I had gone on a little too long. And I was not expecting to pick this up the other day. I went to go pick up a couple serial killer books that I had ordered. And I just happened to see this sitting on the shelf. I did not know there was a release of this here in America. Maybe other than the Scorpion releasing Blu-ray. Which I don't know if that's completely uncut. Apparently this is. And I didn't have high expectations for it as far as quality or being a good film. But I have heard that this is the sleaziest, number one top sleaziest giallo that there is. Now, I've seen Play Motel. I reviewed Play Motel. That, that was number one for me. And it seems to be a pretty popular title, especially when it comes to the sleazy ones. And it came out in 1979 when giallo was really becoming sleazy. And has a pretty straightforward title, Jallo in Venice. Now, it says Gore in Venice. I've never heard that title before. I've just heard Jallo in Venice or Jallo, Jallo in uh, uh, Venezia, I believe is what it is. I've even heard uh, Thriller or Thrilling in Venice. I've heard those titles. So they came out in 1979, which uh, I've talked about this at great lengths throughout all my Jallo films. Just go to any year of a film that I've talked about. In 73, Jallo was kind of going down. The Polizia Teshki was coming in. 74, we had that hybrid year with movies like, you know, What Have They Done to Your Daughters, uh, Suspicious Death of a Minor. Or at least around that time. Maybe not 74. And then by 75, Plitsi Teshki was the number one Italian uh, genre. So by the late 70s, they were trying to find a way to stand out again. And with the rise and demand of hardcore pornography, they thought, ah, let's, let's use that. And I mean, there's Play Motel, Sister of Ursula, that are extremely sleazy. Uh, even way before, into 1971, Slaughter Hotel is one of the sleaziest ones I've seen. And uh, even beyond this, in 82, I think, is when uh, New York Ripper came out, which is one of the sleazier ones as well. Well, this was directed by Mario Landi, who also directed um, uh, Patrick Still Lives, which is, I guess, a very crazy uh film that's an unofficial Italian sequel to Patrick. I do need to pick that up. And it stars Leonora Fanny or Fanny, who was in uh, Hotel Fear, which I do need to see. Jeff Blinn, uh, Gianni Day, Michelle Redzulo, Giancarlo De Luca, who's I think is the only one I know of. Because I believe she, I believe, she play, nope, I'm wrong. Mary Angela Giordano is the one I'm thinking of. She plays Marzia, who, she was the mother in Burial Ground. The one who has a son that's in love with her. She's in this. It probably gets one of the most gruesome death scenes. Uh, the score is done by Berto Pisano, who's one of my favorite Italian composers, and is very frustrating because Pisano can either sound like a big band, kind of, lack of a better term, family guy type music and jazzy, 
or he could sound very much like an uh, uh, Ennio Morricone score. And this has both, but it really recycles older scores that he's done from the uh, Jallo in Terrabank, which is a pre-Argento 60s Jallo that I haven't seen, and Strip Nude for Your Killer. I also believe that there's pieces from Burial Ground in, in this as well, which and I've heard someone say that, but Burial Ground came out after this. The frustrating part is there's a piece from Strip Nude for Your Killer that is in this that is one of my favorite pieces of Jallo music, and I cannot find it anywhere. It's during a strip club scene, a strip nude for your killer, and it's in a scene where Marco and Marzia are having sex towards the end of this film. The closest I can find is a piece called Blue Shadow by Pisano, but that's not it. If anyone knows what I'm talking about, please help me out, because I can't find a score list for... I know it's not from Interrobang, but from Strip Nude or this, I can't find a complete score list. So that's frustrating. Now, yes, this movie is incredibly sleazy. It is up there with Play Motel as the sleaziest. I will say this one doesn't quite have the feeling of needing to shower after like it doesn't have that grimy feel that play motel does it doesn't quite i don't even think this has penetration shots like play motel does we do get full on while well, a guy pleasures himself for a few long scenes we do get sex scenes a plenty it does have some very graphic kills as well uh, of course, it takes place in Venice, which is similar to Who Saw Her Die and uh, Bloodstained Shadow, I believe. But also, this is one of two Gialli to kind of be inspired by the monster of Florence. The other one being The Killer Is Not Alone. But, um, yeah, it's, at first I was thinking, this is not a very good Giallo because... We pretty much, uh, it's going to be hard to talk about without getting into spoilers, but uh, I will say, even though this was not a good movie, I mean, I, I don't hate it. It's not like I completely dislike it. I definitely see that it is just a sleaze fest, but where I did spend most of last year watching and reviewing Gialli and then watching this. The first time I saw someone pour a glass of J&B or I saw that the uh, lead investigators quirk because they all have quirks just because which his is that he always has a hard boiled egg constantly eating and peeling hard boiled eggs kind of makes me think of that Marx Brothers bit uh, and uh, two hard boiled eggs that when I saw the J&B and heard the music and everything it it really was like a warm welcome home. It was like familiar, fun, comfortable territory that I feel like I, I, I've been missing. It it was a good feeling to go back to a giallo. Basically, the story, I mean, even though it's not a very good one, uh, and I mean, this movie opens right up. It, as soon as you hit play, you know, you know how some movies you hit play, for some reason it will start with like the second chapter, it will start in the film. I thought that was with this, because you hit play, and it just cuts right to a guy screaming and being stabbed. I was like, well, that's a way to start it out. And again, uh, this was put out by Full Moon Pictures. I don't know what the difference is with this and Scorpion, other than Scorpion has uh, some commentaries. It has a commentary by Troy Howarth, which I did read the uh, chapter on this in this book. I meant to do a review of all three of these, but I uh, never did. Um, it, it does have different trailers. This one has more women in prison trailers for some reason. 
And there's still no English dubbing. Even though the lead investigator, Jeff Blinn, that's the actor's name, uh, it, Inspector uh, uh, Angelo DePaul, I'm pretty sure he's an English-speaking actor. There's still no dubbing. There's two, uh, two options for English audio, but they're both the same. Uh, and those that are transfer, uh, you know, quality Nazis, this looks fine. So, whether you get Scorpion or you get this, uh, I don't think it'll really matter. But anyway, a guy is stabbed with scissors. His wife is drowned. Uh, Inspector uh, Angelo DePaul is called upon to investigate it. He finds out they were a couple where there was drugs involved, orgy involved. And the husband was putting her through all these. He had some sexual perversions and was kind of an exhibitionist that like put her through all these sexual experiments or things he wanted to try out, which was really just letting people watch and then her having sex with other men. All the while, people involved with the married couple are being killed off by a guy in mirrored sunglasses. And it's up to Angelo DePaul to figure it out. Now, he's not a very good uh, uh, of detective. He's he's one of the weaker detectives I've seen in a Jallo. And a lot of the married couple's story, Fabio and uh, Flavia, which Flavia was played by the actress from uh, Hotel Fear, Leonora Fanny, and Gianno, Gianni D.A., if I pronounce it correctly, is Fabio. She's, in my opinion, one of the prettiest giallo, giallo actresses I've seen. No of uh, Edvige uh, uh, Fennec, but who is? But he looks like a young Iggy Pop, and it was kind of making me laugh. A lot of their story that we see is told through flashback uh, from uh, a friend of Flavia's named Marzia, played by Mary Angela Giordano from uh, uh, Burial Ground. In the first flashback, I swear it feels like it goes on for half the movie. And that's really what bogs this movie down is the sex scenes. It really is. The first flashback that Marcia gives us, it, it's got to go on for like 20 minutes of him being watched, uh, him trying to have sex with her while someone watches, and but she knows and he follows them around. And then they try to have sex at home, but he can't do it. Then he flogs her, then is able to have sex with her. And it just goes on and on. And in between those, when he can't have sex, she starts to pleasure herself. And it just keeps going on. It really bogs the film down. I mean, they must have only had like 60 to 65 uh, minutes of story. They probably could have cut 15, 20 minutes out of sex scenes. And it still could have been plenty sleazy enough. And that would, next to the horrific acting, which that is one of the worst parts, the uh, cinematography and editing, there really isn't much to talk about. The score is really good, uh, especially the pieces used from Strip Nude for Your Killer. That's all well and good. The death scenes and gore scenes are actually kind of impressive. Spe for the budget, the time... I was surprised that it didn't have that thick, vibrant red paint blood that Italian films were using. It actually had like Friday the 13th uh, a look in blood. It was, I, I was surprised. Those effects are decent. There is one where a character gets burnt alive and when we see his face, it is laughable because it's just like, you can tell it's a pullover mask that's all black and you know, like a sloth, goody's eye, like a mouth. But around this eye, you can see his actual eye, like it's a mask 
it, you can tell. But the infamous scene that this one's probably most well known for, where a woman gets her leg slowly sawed off, that and the scissors to the vagina were actually pretty well done. And if I remember correctly, the scissors to the vagina was also in The Killer Is Not Alone. And it goes through this depths of an orgy and all these red herrings. But for a while, I was thinking that we're seeing the killer walk around and kill people. The guy with the mirrored sunglasses that's on the Scorpion release Blu-ray. But... It does have a decent twist. One that I didn't really see coming. But I figured I figured there had to be something. And I didn't mind the ending. Uh, I've read that it's kind of polarizing. People don't like it. But, uh... Yeah, I, I'm not sure what I can say without getting into spoilers. I don't want to go through every plot point like I used to, but... Yeah, if, if Sleaze is your thing, if some of your favorite Gialli is Play Motel, Slaughter Hotel, Sister of Ursula, um, a New York Ripper, then this one's definitely for you. If you're more the Argento or Sergio Martino type uh, Giallo fan, this one might be less. Well, I, Sergio Martino did do Torso, and that's plenty sleazy, but... Yeah, this one is definitely more driven by sleaze rather than story. It it actually doesn't do too much with its uh, setting in Venice. I mean, there's a couple settings when they're in a boat or someone in the a canal, but it really doesn't do much. It, it's really... It's really only worth seeing at, for the curiosity's sake. For seeing the most sleazy jello that there is. That's really... <laughs> that's really its only appeal. But uh, I guess I'm going to get to spoilers now, so... So yeah, despite all the flashbacks of Fabio and Flavia, she... She's tired of letting people watch and him trying to, you know, him trying to get her to be touched and have sex with other men. Which, I mean, we do kind of see it be gradual. Like, first we see him just wanting a guy to watch, then a guy to touch her, then pleasure himself in the movie theater, which thankfully we get to see. Uh, then pl uh, pleasure a uh, delivery boy. While he's, or a delivery guy, he says he's 17, you know, whatever. While he watches, and then have sex with these two workmen while he, out in public while he watches from a distance. But it seems more like sexual assault because they're holding her down, she's screaming. But apparently the two were also involved in this orgy where Marcia... Her, her ex boyfriend or current boyfriend, drug dealer, whatever he is, Marco, was involved. And so the inspectors try to solve the murder of Fabio Flavia. Again, he was stabbed, she was drowned, and pulled out of the canal. That's what doesn't make sense to him. And so when this hooker is stabbed in the vagina with a pair of scissors, which the prostitute was also with this orgy, because they find all these pictures of this orgy, which is what li links Marcia and her boyfriend or whatever. That That's why this uh, DePaul guy is uh, looking into them. But Marcia is also getting these threatening phone calls and letters sent from possibly an another ex-boyfriend which and maybe I missed something because this movie is pretty boring as well especially during the sex scenes but why DePaul just doesn't look into this ex I have no idea 
Turns out that's exactly who it is. The guy with the mirrored glasses that we see stabbed the prostitute with the scissors, set Marco on fire, saw off Marcia's leg. Uh, yo, it's her ex, the one that's been calling her, that's been a major subplot through the whole movie. But they're also looking into uh, Flavia's ex-boyfriend, who, who uh, she dated up until she met Fabio. Which, in the beginning of the film, where it just comes on mid-stab of Fabio, after we see his death, we see someone jerk awake like it was a dream. That's Flavia's ex, who is an artist, kind of like a comic book artist whose work involves like a pair of scissors. So uh, DePaul is looking into him as well. And also in the opening of the film, there's this old guy that lives nearby that his partner questions. He's like, no, nah, I didn't see anything. But then later on, he, he te tells DePaul, oh yeah, yeah, I saw stuff. And he said, well, why didn't you tell... The other guy, and he's just like, ah, you wouldn't. Just because, I guess. But, um... The... The twist is... And why I was thinking, this is not a very good Jalo. What, is the reveal gonna be... He takes off his glasses, and then we see, you know, who it is? No. The guy with the glasses only killed those three um, out of the five people. Because he was still in love with Marcia. And he was mad at her current boyfriend or whoever. He was jealous of the prostitute because the prostitute got to touch Marcia. He wanted to kill Fabio Flavia, but someone already beat him to it. So he does get arrested for the three. And I will say, not the dubbing. The dubbing can really kill even a good performance. Not to say this has any good ones. But I will say... Uh, Leonora Fani, who plays Flavia... She probably did the best or was the most serviceable. But also... Uh, Mikel Renzullo, who plays uh, Andrea Karen, Mirror sunglasses guy. He does okay too as playing like a crazy person. So he's ruled out as as the first two. And every time they arrest someone, DePaul's like, I just don't get it. Something's missing. I'm not convinced. Even though he grills the hell out of these people. So like he gets a confession or gets what he needs. And he's like, I just don't think it's them. It, he's also just not a very interesting character. The only thing about him is he loves his hard-boiled eggs. And it even makes a point that he's always peeling and dropping the shells. Like At one point, he gets up and it zooms in on the ashtray that he was sitting by and didn't use. But he's not a very interesting inspector or anything. He doesn't even really do any police work. He, he just kind of gets told the obvious and then... He's, he's mostly driven by just script. I don't want to say convenience, but the story kind of solves itself uh, for him, I guess. So then the the old man from the beginning tells him, oh, yeah, these two workers were having sex with her while he watched, but she wasn't into it. So then he goes to question the uh, the two workers that had sex with her. And this is after he arrests Flavia's ex. Because, and Flavia's ex keeps admitting the worst shit. Like saying, oh, Flavia hated Fabio for all this exhibitionism he was putting her through. And I, I still loved her. She wouldn't leave him because she loved him. So I, I told her, if you want me to, I'll kill him. So he admits to that. He finds... A uh, pair of scissors in his apartment, which I think the inspector left. And, you know, just every time he talks to him, it, it just makes himself sound worse. 
So he's arrested. But then when the workmen tell their story, the twist is after she had sex with the workmen, Fabio tried to have sex with her by the canal. She got pissed, grabbed the scissors out of her purse, because I guess they were buying supplies to redo their apartment. Stabs him with the scissors, which is very over the top. It just, I'll kill you, I'll kill you, like 20 times. And every time we see the scissors stab the torso, it literally looks like a black shirt on like a pillow. It's just this like rocking torso. Then her ex magically shows up and she jumps in the canal. And he jumps in to save her, but she drowns anyway. So she killed him and then she drowned. So, the, the killer that we see through the whole movie did kill the people in the main case, or the main plot. In fact, there was no killer. They killed each other, essentially. And uh, it even ends in a flashback, because one thing that's popular with these Italian films is as soon as the story is told, it just ends. So like in the flashback, when the ex takes Flavia out of the canal and lays her down, it just shows him standing up in that freeze frame credits. It doesn't even come out of the flashback. So yeah, the, the performances are pretty bad. The writing and the dialogue is just as bad. Nothing really great about the cinematography. The only part that's really interesting would be when... Uh, Marcia's ex is chasing her through her house because that's it gets kind of raw and uh, voyeuristic looking really the only stylish part of the whole film uh, uh, like a technical aspect the sex scenes go on way too long in, in the masturbation scenes and that first one that Marcia tells when we first see Fabio Flavia goes on for literally so long that after a while, I forgot we were in a flashback. Uh, I thought these were characters were being uh, introduced to. I actually forgot what I was watching. It goes on for so long. The only thing I can give it is, okay, it does have some graphic kills and some decent effects. They're dated, but they're decent. I mean, would I have preferred the thick, vibrant red paint blood? I think that might have added a little bit of a, you know, maybe some more character to it. But using not realistic, but more realistic blood than a regular Jello, I would say it did make it a bit more graphic. So, yeah, that did help. Dated effects, but they were still decent. Graphic kills. And a twist that... I mean, sure, I'm sure some people saw it coming. It's not a huge twist as far as, you know, thought out or intricate. But, you know, I was thinking, this is a bad Jallo. We're just following the killer. His only disguise is these big sunglasses. Turns out he's not the one they're looking for, really. And there, there is no one they're looking for. That's why no one fit the pattern. That's why he was unsatisfied with every suspect. Because yeah, she killed him, then killed herself. But yeah, th the only real appeal of this film is to see the sleaziest Jallo ever made. That that really is it. To you know, the same reason why you would watch any super controversial cult film. That's really it, its only appeal, and to add it to your Jallo collection. It's really the only reason why I have it. The only reason why I wanted to see it. I mean, this isn't a rant, so I'm surprised. I mean, I strongly dislike to play Motel. This is way better than that. But it's still not very good. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. It, uh, if you're a hardcore Jalo fan that has to see all of them, then go for it. But if you're more Argento, Fulci, eh, like, if you're not into movies like Slaughter Hotel, Play Motel, Sister of Ursula, the more sleazier stuff, then you're not going to like this. But there, 
I have finally seen the sleaziest Jello. It, it, I would say I definitely got more of a sleazy feel from Play Motel. I mean, it definitely had a grosser feel to it. But then again, even, even New York Ripper gives me that feeling of needing to shower more than this one does. But I guess for what it shows, maybe this is the sleaziest. Play Motel is so forgetful anyway, but anyway, that is Jallo in Venice. Uh, thank you for watching.